Ladies and gentlemen, dear Mr. Schramenthal, dear Udo Bux and especially Excellency, I welcome very much my colleagues Thomas Mann and um, working in one important and hiding um, the flux of money um, and trying to earn money in a way uh, that is illegal or if you earn it le um, legally then to try to bring it in illegal branches. So we have several kind of uh, financing terrorism and I'm very thankful that uh, my colleague Katarina Kinici is today here. Uh, we always say she is in the S&D group, but we are the best friends. Why we are the best friends? Because we try to work together um, in a very, not only fair way, in a trustful way, and on the other side, we are both very engaged in the issue of anti-terrorism and working against organized crime. Uh, Katarina Kinici is the daughter of uh, uh, Rocco Kinici, who was killed uh, by the Mafia in Sicily. So he was one of the first magistrates to be killed in Sicily, so, so she knows personally what it means to be a victim of a serious crime. Um, so thank you very much for coming. Um, and it's the I think Claire Moody will join us a little bit later. Um, I'm very thankful because she's in CEDE and in AFED committee. Um, just uh, just a sh some short remarks. Uh, first issue on terrorist financing. Uh, I think we have to uh, separate two branches of, uh, of financing. The one is the micromanagement, because uh, in newer times, the terrorist attacks doesn't cost very much. To have a knife, to, to uh, rent a car, there are not a lot of things that you need to, uh, that you need to, 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 to buy or, or for you need money. But we see that there are certain kinds of uh, earning of money that are going into, um, uh, that are uh, organized by radicalized uh, or radical imams in certain mosques. Um, stemming or being partly financed by Wahhabitish uh, uh, families trying to undermine, uh, let's say, a Western world, a Western system. This brings um, us in a political very complicated situation because a part um, of um, the political groups here in the European Parliament try then to bash, uh, in a very general way, the Muslim world and this is uh, the wrong kind of doing it. We have to have an integrative society and not to separate one part of religions and then to, to question why um, certain persons are radicalizing. We have to do everything to integrate um, uh, all the Muslims living in the European Union and to, give, uh, to, 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 to live with them and not against them. And this kind of uh, very right-wing radical, radical separation is a huge problem. On the other side, um, sometimes I have the impression um, that uh, um, if I'm speaking to a Jewish world, that there are other groups being having a lot of uh, uh, preconditions to the Jewish religion and to, uh, to spread out anti-Semitism. In our work, we are telling very clearly <coughs> And it's very nice to have such a nice music. I'm not. I'm not sure if the speakers are so happy late. <laughs> um, uh, on the second side, on, uh, to create anti-Semitism and to separate another religion. This is the same wrong issue. You have to see the reality. What is happening? not the world that you wish to have. They are at the very left-wing side of, the, of our house. They wish to have a nice world. So we are one world, there is no war, everybody is a good human being, and we are all helping each other. But I have the impression that the real world is a little bit otherwise. I would like to contribute to this world, but uh, it's not always very easy. So we need uh, a lot of prevention on the social and cultural area. We need a lot of prevention on the security side, and we need a lot of cooperation to fight back um, um, radical, uh, radicalization and extremism um, 
in our neighborhood and in the European Union. Um, this, these are one of the most important points of our report in the Special Committee of Terrorism because I think that uh, if we could tackle, if we, if we could achieve to tackle the problem of radicalization, then we could have much less, uh, we would have less problems than we are facing at the moment. Um, in this area, we have to look at our European values. Even if we have different cultures, there are values that are untouchable. Um, Part of the values are that we are tolerant in religion, so not only in one direction, every direction. Everybody has to be tolerant. Nobody has the right to uh, to commit violent crimes, to uh, to hold hate preachers, whatever. This is against our values. We have to make it very clear that this is not acceptable. But we are facing certain problems in the kind how we are dealing with. For example, in the European Union, it's absolutely normal in every, nearly every member state that we are finding books in libraries, in open libraries, uh, where four-year-old children are taught how to be intolerant, how to, how to violate elate people who are not believing in the right belief. So this kind, how can this happen that we are not seeing this? So we have to see all the preparatory structures, as it, we call it now, the ecosystem of radicalization, how it works. Because it only, a radicalization can only work if somebody is taught over a certain time as child already certain intolerant ideas. If you don't have any intolerant idea in your head, if I would ask my two children to become radicalized, they would ask me if I'm crazy. Um, or if the person is crazy, they are, they are very clear. But if you have uh, lived in a, in perhaps in a family or in a structure where every Sunday you are taught intolerance, then we have to see who are the persons who are teaching this kind of intolerance and no more accepting them and working together with all those who, have, who are tolerant. If it's, there are priests, imams or rabbis, that's uh, to work together. In a lot of, um, for example, of um, inauguration that I did, um, I remember, for example, well, when when inauguration in a in a kindergarten, a Catholic kindergarten, whom did we invite? We invited an imam that was because we knew that there are a lot of Muslim children in this area. They went to a Catholic kindergarten, so. Being, uh, being in this situation, we invited the imam. At the same time, we had a Jewish community there and a Greek Orthodox. So we invited four. So, and all of them worked together. And uh, we created a kind of cooperation in the area, in the region, of common understanding of each other, of learning of the religions of each other, and not, of being, uh, not uh, teaching separation. And this is a very important issue. If you have different religions on one place, everybody must respect the European values and working in favor of our European values. And this means that we have women and men are, have the same rights um, that uh, children are taught to tolerance, that, they're, that uh, the human dignity is untouchable. This is one part that is very important for me. So thank you very much for today because I think we really can work on it, and we really have to work on it, and especially we have to be very clear that in the last 30 years we didn't see, or we didn't want to see several things. So and I, I think we have to see it, and not to ignore it and to believe, oh, it will go away. No, it won't go away if <coughs> we are not working that it goes away. So thank you very much.